starting with the news alert coming in. The United States and Britain have issued a security alert for Kabul. US and UK have warned their citizens to avoid hotels in the Afghan capital. This warning comes days after dozens were killed at a mosque in an attack claimed by the Islamic State. Now, US State Department has issued a statement saying, and I'm quoting here, US citizens who are at or near the Serena Hotel should leave immediately. Now, meanwhile, Britain's foreign Commonwealth and Development Office has added, quoting yet again, in light of the increased risk, you are advised not to stay in hotels, particularly in Kabul, such as the Serena Hotel. Now, the Taliban, with seized power in August, are seeking international recognition and assistance to avoid a humanitarian disaster and ease Afghanistan's economic crisis, whereas the hardline Islamist group transitions from a rebel army to a governing power. They are struggling to contain the threat from the Afghanistan chapter of the Islamic State. Now, Islamic State are, has been carrying out attacks on Taliban and Afghan civilians. Recently, over 60 people were killed in an ISIS suicide bombing at a mosque in Afghanistan's northern Kundu city. Since the Taliban takeover, many foreigners have left Afghanistan. Some journalists, aid workers remain in the capital, however. The well-known Serena, a luxury hotel popular with business travelers and foreign guests, has twice been targeted by attacks by the Taliban. Moving on, now Russia and the United States have agreed to lift targeted sanctions in order to facilitate the Under Secretary of State Victoria Nuland's travel to Moscow this week. Now, Nuland is scheduled to visit Moscow this week for meetings with the Russian officials. Now, Russian Foreign Ministry spokesperson Maria Zakharova said that Nuland was on the sanctions list that prohibits individuals from entering the country, but has been removed following a similar move by the United States that barred a Russian citizen from entering its territory. According to an official statement from U.S. State Department, Nuland will travel to Moscow to meet with senior officials and other diplomats to discuss a range of bilateral, regional and global issues. The Undersecretary's trip to Moscow comes amid, a deteriorating tie, comes amid deteriorating ties between two Cold War foes since taking office. We know the Biden administration has imposed a number of sanctions against Russia for poisoning of opposition leader Alexei Navalny, the stolen wins hack and the efforts to influence the 2020 presidential election as well. Now, China's Evergrande Group offshore bondholders are now concerned that it is close to defaulting on debt payments and wants more information and transparency from the cash-strapped property developer. Evergrande, which could trigger one of China's largest defaults as it wrestles with debts of more than $300 billion and whose troubles have already sent shockwaves across the global markets, missed payments on dollar bonds worth a combined $131 million that were due on 23rd of September and 29th of September. With Evergrande staying silent on this dollar debt payment and prioritizing onshore creditors, offshore investors have now been left wondering if they will face large losses at the end of the 30-day grace period for last month's coupons. Now, a group of bondholders have already in enlisted Investment Bank Maurice and Co. and law firm Kirkland and Ellis to advise them. Now, more offshore bondholders want to engage constructively with the company but are concerned about the lack of information from what was once China's top-selling property developer. Evergrande now faces nearly $150 million in offshore payment obligations by next week. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.